Mark 3, 24. If a kingdom be divided against itself, that kingdom cannot stand. If a house be divided against itself, that house cannot stand. And if Satan rise up against Satan and be divided, he cannot stand but have an end. And we'll witness in the end, Satan is against Satan, the East versus the West. And they're all Edomites, the house of Edom. Call Halo Yahweh Bashem Al Shai, Bashem Rakakwadash. Double honors unto the apostles, double honors to the elder bishops. Salutations to all my fellow laborers that do this work in truth and sincerity, risking their lives and their freedom to do so now more so than ever. To the scattered elect that are scattered around the four corners of the earth that be like unto the speckled bird, the Israelite foreigners. And to the Akwaf that are listening and learning to you, I say Shalom. This is your brother Malcolm from the branch of the Great Millstone here in Chicago. And I want to start with the reading of Esther because you're going to hear a lot of lies being, you know, hurled back and forth from both sides. A lot of propaganda. And and not that uh, I'm for Russia at all. <laughs> but uh, one thing that I know that here in the West, the West are the kings of propaganda. And... Um, through my experiences throughout my life, they've lied about many of things that come to light uh, later on. Sometimes it was the, the lie was so blatant, you know, it was a lie as they were telling it. But, you know, when you own all the information outlets, you can just put up whatever you want. And any counter uh, arguments or information that, that reveals what you're saying not to be true or counters what you're saying, you just simply don't show it. So to the viewing public, it's like the evidence that proves you wrong just doesn't exist. So therefore, you're right. But uh, uh, this is making me think of. Uh, I'm going to go to the book of Esther and I'm going to read. Chapter three, starting in verse five. All right, because. Eventually, this hatred and this anger is going to be turned toward Israel, to mainly toward the prophets. But all Israel is going to be uh, a target. And that's kind of like the, and that sort of demonization right now. They're targeting the West is targeting uh, uh, Putin with it. But the West has a history that's far worse. Than, and Putin doesn't have enough lifespan to commit enough crimes that would match up to that, which has been done by America and the West. All right. If he killed every man, woman and child. In Ukraine, it would never match up to the death and the blood, the death of land and wrongs that have been done by America and the West. This is Esther uh, 3, starting with verse 5. And when Haman saw Mordecai bowed down, bowed not, nor did him reverence, then was Haman full of wrath. All right, and Haman, or Amon, <laughs> who we like to, we call vocab Malone that was an Edomite. All right, for anyone who doesn't know, Mordecai is from the tribe of Judah. And he thought scorn to lay hands on Mordecai alone, for he had showed him the people of Mordecai, wherefore Haman sought to destroy all the all of the, the Jews that were throughout the whole kingdom of uh, of Ahasuerus, even the people of Mordecai. And in the first month that is the month of Nisan, in the twelfth year of King of uh, Osiris, they cast her, that is, a lot, before Haman, from day to day, and from month to month, to the twelfth month, that is, the month of Adar. And Haman said unto King Osiris, There is a certain people scattered abroad and dispersed among the people in all provinces of thy kingdom, as the Israelites still are to this day. And their laws are diverse from all people, neither keep they the king's laws. Therefore, it is not for the king's prophet to suffer them. If it please the king, let it be written that they may be destroyed and will pay 10,000 talents of silver to the lands of those that have charge of the businesses to bring it into the, king, into the king's treasuries. And the king took his ring and from his hand and gave it unto Amon, the son of uh Hamathada, the Agagite, the Jews' enemies. All right, so so they're Edomites. All right, Agag was the son of uh, is the son of 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 Esau. 
And the king said unto Amon, The silver is given to thee, and the people also, to do to them as seemeth good to thee. All right? So the way they burned, raped, murdered, and killed us, killed our children, they, well, this is nothing new. All right? Then the king's scribe called the 13th day in the first month, and that was written according to all that Haman had commanded unto the king's lieutenants, to the governors that were once uh, uh, over every province, and to the rulers of, of every people and every province according to the writings thereof. And the people, after the language in the name of King Osiris, was it written and sealed with the king's ring. And the letters were sent by the post and all the king's provinces to destroy, to kill, to cause, perish, to cause to perish all the Jews, both young and old, little, little children and women. And one day, even on the 13th day of the 12th month, which is the month of Adar, to take the spoil, to take the spoil of them for a prey. So they were planning on destroying us. But you know what? If when you read this story, you keep reading, it all turned back on Amon the same way it's going to turn back on Esau today. And that same sort of demonization they're trying to make for the Russians. So we don't even really know what's going on over there because they're controlling the media from both sides. But without any further ado, let's listen to his very biased report because he's not reporting uh, fairly. He's reporting very biasedly toward the West. All right. So let's let's listen to him. Poland, Lithuania, the United States of America, Canada, Japan, and now Israel are all calling for massive action to be taken against Russia. These are the nations that will begin the next world war. One of the most chilling images or a series of images that Kelly and I have seen. Now, real quick. Uh, what's the general that just died? Can't think of his name. The, the Jake general from from the. Uh, from the Iraq war. Uh, well, I can't think of his name, but basically he testified before Congress and before the courts that there were weapons of mass destruction and there was never any weapons of mass destruction. And, 50, and uh, uh, not 50,000, 500,000, but actually a million civilians, women and children, were burned, massacred, and the bodies blown to, to pieces at the hands of America and the West. Civilians. Yet no one was brought up on charges uh, of, of crimes against humanity or anything of that nature. And it was and it was a false war all based upon lies. Yet not one person spent the day in jail. Think about that. In, in this conflict between Russia and Ukraine is the mothers of individuals who are fleeing an area, writing all of their personal family contacts on the back of their children. They're doing this because if their children make it out, but they do not, they want the children to meet up with family. Imagine the despair and the hardship that the innocent people in Ukraine and the innocent people in every war suffer at the hands of brutal violence because of war. Imagine having to write your uncles or your aunts or your grandparents or some distant family or even a friend's contact information on the back of your child because you're going to try and evacuate and you might get separated at best or the child might be the only survivor. These are the types of scenarios that you need to get ready for. This is no longer a practice drill. This is no longer a scenario. Now he's actually speaking some real stuff right about now because he's saying, what he's basically saying is that that's coming here. And it is. Scenario of what ifs. These events are happening to people around our world right now. And we need to get ready for them to happen here in our country, in the United States of America, to you and your family. Imagine how many people in this country are not prepared to deal with that sort of mentally uh, handicapping problem. The German uh, regions of uh, uh, the gas division of Gazprom in Germania, German, uh, Germany, a subsidiary of the Russian energy giant Gazprom, has been taken under control of the German government and effectively nationalized to reportedly secure critical infrastructure and energy across the country. France has expelled 35 Russian diplomats. Germany just declared an undisclosed number of Russian officials in the Russian embassy 
in Germany as persona non grata. Lithuania mm. has expelled Russian amb uh, Russia's ambassador. It has closed Moscow's consulate. Lithuania's foreign minister has said that his country has downgraded all of its diplomatic ties with Russia in full solidarity with Ukraine and strongly condemns Russia's atrocities in the country. Remember, we're not here to judge who has done this, who has committed war crimes or acts of violence or acts of evil against men and women and children and the innocent in war. What, we are, what we're here to do is realize what is happening and get ready for it to happen to us. Satellite photos show uh, multiple uh, despair, uh, you know, desperate, desperate and disparaging images in uh, that. Okay, so I stand corrected. He did give a, a, a neutral report. But nevertheless, those, those countries, Lithuania, all those countries that he named in the beginning, when America went into Iraq and killed a million civilians, all right? Where was all this sanctions and and cond condemnation? Where was that then? Let's go to another video. Let's go to uh, this one, Off Grid Farmer, right about the nine minute mark. In Ukraine, that's the headlines and has got the whole world fired up. And Joe Biden went on the television the other day and is calling for I can't help but say but that my man's look like Wolfman Jack from back in the day, man. <laughs> All right. Putin to be tried for war crimes, folks. So we got a lot of different information coming on this. Every so Putin is to be tried for war crimes. But like we said, a million uh, uh, civilians were killed, non-combatants. But no one was tried for crimes of, against humanity or war crimes. Not, not one. And then all the evidence that surfaced of all the mistreatment of the prisoners and the making them naked and the shocking and taking pictures of them naked and, you know, and, and making them pile on top of each other, you know, just all the, the wicked and raping them and, you know, and beating them. All, all those images surfaced, but yet still no one, you know, no one went to jail or any of that. No crimes against humanity charged against the West. Every side is saying that it's fault. this is a false flag Russia is claiming this is the false flag perpetrated by Ukraine because when they left that town of Bucha, uh, there was no slaughter on the street. In fact, I have... Yeah, and, and one thing's for sure, there is a Nazi element in Ukraine right now operating. And uh, where is the whole, where's all the, the outcry of the anti-Semitic, you know, uh, where where's all that? Where's this, you know, be, that the West is supporting that? You know, and and then in the and name and as a matter of fact, it's strange. I find it strange that Israel is joining this fight against Russia and Japan with all this anti-Semitic activity. You know, or groups that are operating within Ukraine. I just find that, you know, that's just kind of odd because normally, if anyone says, you don't even have to say anything bad about them. You just you know just mention them and you get you know labeled an anti, you know information about that survey Lavrov, the foreign minister of Russia has came out and gave an explanation of what happened that when they left the town folks Ukraine mayor they had a call to the Ukraine mayor of that town and he said everything was fine and okay and then a couple of days later this event was staged so mm. um, you know you can believe who and um, there is um, the West has a, a history of staged events there's been events that's happened over the last 10, 15 years, uh, which a lot of these events had a lot of uh, evidence that they weren't actually, you know, what they were said to be. And and once again, though, when you control the media, any evidence that uh, that proves opposite of your narrative, you just label that uh, conspiracy or not real or whatever. And this is what they do. All right. Stage because there was no weapons of mass destruction. And look what happened. You have to keep reinforcing that fact. Who you want, you can believe that Russia slaughtered all these citizens, or you can believe that Ukrainian military did this, folks. But I'm going to give you information from both sides of the operation. See, there's propaganda coming in from both sides. And anything to make Russia look bad, you're going to see it uh, published all over the world. Hmm. Uh, to reinforce that uh, 
this brutal dictator, Vladimir Putin, is killing people, shooting babies in the head, bashing their heads up against the wall, slitting women's bellies open with babies. Oh, he's the most brutal dictator that ever lived. That's all you're going to hear on the West, but that's not the truth. But that's what you're going to hear from the Western propaganda. So I'm going to give you both sides of the story so you can make an uh, intelligent decision on what is really going on. But before we do, folks, we got some breaking news coming in. You're not going to believe this. Um, I do have to confirm this, but I'm going to go ahead and show you this, uh, that we might be the first uh, person reporting on this. If it is not true, folks, we'll come on and do a retraction. But let me get this on the screen for you guys um, and see if we can get this article up. Now, this is being reported uh, by Hal Turner. Like I said, this news has just come on. And I, uh, I haven't, can't, cannot confirm it yet, but I wanted to give you just in case. But I've been telling you folks that NATO and the United States is running this operation in Ukraine. Hmm. The United States and NATO is running this operation. It's not the Ukrainian military. So this is coming in from Hal Turner. Numerous reports, U.S. Army General has been captured in Mar Maripol, with the Azov Nazi. So this is the general right here. His name is Clouter, C-L-O-U-T-I-E-R, Clouter, General. Now he did say that he didn't know if this was true. He's going to do more research on it to find out if it's true. And if it isn't, he's going to recant it. Um, but one thing's for sure, whether this is actually true or not, there is a Nazi element operating. The Azov is a Nazi regiment operating in America under NATO under America. That part is true. So time will tell, you know, because if this is, if this, if this turns out to be true, they will not be able to hide and keep this. All right. They'll just have to do something else to distract. There'll be some horrible incident. Something will happen to distract away from this. If this be found to be true and then they'll be plastered all over the news. All right. Maybe they'll just put, uh, Will and, uh, and, and Will Smith and, and uh, uh, the other guy, the other comedian, Chris, uh, Chris, Chris Rock, back on TV. Clouter, according to breaking news, this general, U.S. Army general, has been caught leading the Azov Battalion, the neo-Nazis in Ukraine in Maripol area. Numerous reports are now circulating, claiming that U.S. Army Major General Roger Air Clouter has been captured by Russian forces in or around Maropol, Ukraine, where the reports claim he was helping the Azov Battalion, which is Ukraine's official Nazi unit. According to Wikipedia, Major General Roger Air Clouter is a United States Army Lieutenant General who serves as the commander of the Allied Land Command. Previously, he served as the commander of the United States Army in Africa. Allied Land Command, LANCOM, formerly Allied Land Forces Southeastern Europe, Land Southeast is the standing headquarters for NATO forces, land forces, which may be assigned as necessary. NATO, there you go, folks. The commander, LANCOM, is the prime land warfare advisor to the alliance. When directed by the Supreme Allied Commander Europe, it provides the core of the headquarters responsible for the conduct of land operations. The land command is based at uh, Buka, it's Mir in Turkey. The email to the Pentagon sent several hours ago has gone un unanswered, which from a media perspective is very unusual. If this report was false, the Pentagon would deny it immediately. They have not denied it. But no. And see, that's the issue. They have not denied it. So, you know, and maybe they didn't deny it because the evidence is overwhelming and it will be more embarrassing if they do deny it. That's what I'm believing. That's what it's looking like. No official answer has come from the Pentagon. Either way, as of 6.10 p.m. Eastern Daylight Time on Monday. So, folks, if this is true, then this just confirms what I have been telling you from all along, that NATO is in Ukraine. No, we are directing the military in Ukraine. I believe the 82nd Airborne has been in Ukraine for a long time, for at least a month. And now, if this story is true then this is the high-ranking American NATO soldier that uh, supposedly has been captured uh, by the uh, Russian military, folks. Like I said, if, 
If this is true, this is Let's a pause. This is uh, Sirach 10 and 8. And it reads, because of unrighteous dealings and injuries and riches got by deceit, the kingdom is translated from one people to another. And that's what this control of Ukraine is about, because Ukraine is basically the, 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 the big port area that brings everything in and out of Russia. So whoever can, controls Ukraine will eventually control Russia. And that's the reason why uh, the West doesn't want Ukraine to remain or be a part of Russia again. The smoking gun. I told you this months ago, and nobody wanted to believe me. I told you that NATO was already in Ukraine directing the, the military of the Ukrainian army, folks. Joe Biden is a liar. He's a liar. He said that no troops would be on the ground. And if this story comes to pass as true, then this shows you that we have generals, U.S., United States generals in Ukraine right now, directing the Ukrainian neo-Nazis, folks. He's headed the neo-Nazis. The neo-Nazis, some of the most brutal soldiers in Ukraine. Mm. So, like I said, this is unconfirmed at the moment. I cannot confirm this story. The story yeah, and it's possible that these neo-Nazis did a lot of damage to the Ukrainian citizens, um, and then they blame it on the Russians so that they have a reason to push forward and some people say oh how could you say that well because it's, it's not like America doesn't have a history of doing that sort of thing we actually have lots of events in our history where where America's done that point blank period we just broke if this is a false story listen if this is a false story I'll come back on as soon as I find out information and retract the story but we're going with it because I do think that we do have NATO forces in Ukraine already. I think we have thousands and thousands and thousands of NATO forces in Ukraine. In fact, Russia shot down a helicopter containing two French Foreign Legion soldiers. And there are many supported, uh, supposed Russian- And that's a very uh, well-known mercenary-like, the French Foreign Legion. Very dangerous, well-trained uh, uh, warriors you know, and typically uh, army for hire, all right? This is uh, Ecclesiastes, the, the 12th chapter, because, you know, believing in these politicians, these politricians, to play, pay, play their politics. Uh, this is Ecclesiastes 12 and, and 10, and it reads, Never trust thy enemy, for like his iron rust of, so is his wickedness, all right? Um... It says, though he humble himself and go crouching, yet take good heed and beware of him, and thou shalt be unto him as if thou hast wiped a looking glass, and thou shalt know that his rust have not all been have not been altogether wiped away. He's he's still wicked. He's still that same serpent, man, that same venom that he's going to bite you with. All right. Set him not by thee, lest when he have overthrown thee, he shall stand up in thy place. All right. And that's, you know, and all throughout history, I just saw an advertisement for the Norsemen, all right? You know, and it's like, how many times we got to prove to you in history that the people in Europe were not white people, the people in Sweden were not white during the time of uh, all the history that, they're, that, you know, that they're talking about when it comes to the Vikings and the Brits and the Scots and the Irish and all their clashes, all right? They were all the forest people and servants and still living in the caves and stuff. Right, they were not the ruling class people. Those people in those lands were black, and the evidence is overwhelming to prove that. So you can't trust these people. They lie, and they will stand up in your place and rewrite history and say that they're you. All right, but it says, "Set him not by thee, but when he have overthrown thee, he will stand up in thy place. Neither let him sit at thy right hand, lest he seek to take thy seat." Thou at the last remember my words and be pricked therewith. Call Halali Hawbashin Awashai Bashem Kakbadash Wa Ababa Kwam Yasharala Shalawan.